It's ironic that the, uh, the Beastie's entry into the hip hop world was the same scenario that it was for black artists in the 50s that didn't put their uh, faces on their album covers until you were sucked in already. Um, my story with the Beastie Boys was that uh, after church in 1984, Philadelphia's uh, premier hip hop show would come on at two in the afternoon till seven, in the af uh, till 7 p.m. So my cousin and I were rushed to Eckerd's Drugs and get the cheap uh, three, four dollar cassettes so that we could run home and race home because church let out like 1.30. Race to Eckerd's, get home so we could start recording all five hours of that show. And um, when the Beastie Groove uh, first came on, which was the, the B-side to uh, Rock Heart, their very first uh, Def Jam uh, 12 inch. We thought they were Puerto Rican because <laughs> there's a break in the song. They did this little uh, skit, I guess like hip hop's first skit where, you know, in the middle of the song, they uh, kick Rick Rubin out the studio because he messed up the drum machine. And Mike D had a crazy heavy Bronx Puerto Rican, like the term you just fessing, like me and my cousins still say that to each other. Oh man, you messed up the drum machine, man. Yo, we give you long dollars, man. You just fessing, man. I don't even want you just fessing. So we just that became our lingo for all of 1984. And then I saw Crush Groove, and I was like, Yo, man, for Puerto Rican guys, these guys sure dance white. <laughs> you know, but you know, by then, I, you know, everything that they they've done. Um, you know, they released hip hop's first acapella. I guess as a mistake, Def Jam had mistakenly uh, given the acapella version of Hold It Now, Hit It, uh, the acapella version as side A and the album version as side B. So when we brought the 12 inch, it was the acapella we heard first. So we thought that was like the most revolutionary thing. Like, oh, they don't even need drum machines. Like these guys are so bad. They don't need no music. Like they just run by themselves. So like, that song was a hit, the acapella version. Like if you played the drum machine version, you got booed in clubs. Like you had to play the acapella version. And so everything they've ever done has been revolutionary. Like even their pop culture references on Paul's Boutique and like I've, I've never once questioned, I think the first time that anyone ever called them out was like third base in 1990, but it was like way too late after that fact, you know, so.